Mountains present the Pacific Story. In the mounting fury of world conflict, events in the Pacific are taking on ever greater importance. Here is the story of the Pacific and the millions of people who live around this greatest sea. The drama of the peoples whose destiny is at stake in the Pacific War. Here, as another public service, is the tale of the war in the Pacific and its meaning to us and to the generations to come. Bangkok. nervous man in Thailand these days. His name is Luang Gavit Abhuiwan. He is premier of Thailand. He is a long way from the bombings of Bangkok, but he's nervous anyway. He's pacing back and forth like this at his place up at Pechabun, the new capital of Thailand, 190 miles northeast of Bangkok. Yes? It is Coward. I have a dispatch for you. Bring it in. It is from Burma. Yes. The message says that the British forces in Burma, driving toward the Thailand border, have taken important positions at Kalau and east of Tungu. They are getting closer to us. Uh, is there anything else, sir? Hmm? Uh, no. I mean... Uh... Have we had any uh, visitors today? Uh, no, sir. Mm-hmm. Uh, the guards are still at their posts? Yes, sir. And they're all armed. Good. Good. Uh, is there anything else, sir? Hmm? Uh, no, no. That's all. That's all. But it isn't even the British advance on the western frontier of Thailand that makes Luang Gavit and Hui Wang nervous. It's something more immediate than that. He remembers what happened to the last premier. Stop that man. Stop him. He tried to assassinate the premier. Stab him. The Wang people, Sangram, are you all right? Yes. Yes, I think I am. Let me help you. Here. No, Let me. no, no. I'm all right. Well, he missed me. How fortunate. How fortunate. Come, let us go at once. Yes. Yes, by all means. Let us go. I didn't see him until he aimed the gun at me. The man with the gun escaped in the crowd. This is the third time they have tried to assassinate people Sangram. It is the underground. That's who it is, the underground. Next time, people Sangram may not be so lucky. The underground has sworn to kill those... Gavit Abhoi Wong, the man who finally took Peebul Sangram's place as premier, is nervous. He has a good memory. Siam herself cannot present any danger to Indochina, but the day she enters into an alliance with Japan, every safety to Indochina will vanish. That's what some Frenchman interested in Thailand's next-door neighbor, Indochina, said 30 years ago. Well, Siam is the door to British Maria to British Burma and to French Indochina. Asylum now aims to overthrow the yoke of European powers. The fact that an important Japanese said this was significant. That should have been a warning to us, for we were not under the yoke of any European power. We had been independent for 600 years. It's all clear to Gavit Apui Wong. Now that his country is occupied by the Japanese... It may soon be a battleground. We of French Indochina were not apprehensive about what was happening in Thailand until the Wang people's Songram became premier in 1938. Gavit Wang remembers the Bangkok of that time. He remembers the court dancers performing in the plaza of the royal palace. I 
have never seen anything so enchanting. These court dancers are trained from childhood. Such grace and such subtle beauty. Dancers have been performing before the royal palace like this for centuries. What a setting this is. Why, it's almost unreal. The palace here is almost exactly in the center of Bangkok. They say that no matter where you enter our country, you always come to Bangkok. And you always come here to the royal palace. Gavita Hui Wong was proud of Bangkok's old charm. That's the Mainam River there. Oh, what a colorful river. Uh, are these houseboats? Yes. Many thousands of our people live in boats like that all of their lives. You see, not so many years ago, Bangkok was almost entirely a city built on pontoons or on piles. There still seems to be almost an entire network on canals. Yes. And most of them join with the Mainam River here. Uh, how far is Bangkok up the river? Oh, about 20 miles. Look at that. The motor boats pull those trains off smaller boats in from the villages up and down the river. Oh, they're hauling vegetables and fruits. They bring them into the marketplaces. Mm -hmm. And uh, look at that man in that sampan. Yes? You see how it's... Thirdly, he sculls that boat. Wonderful. Men have been sculling boats like that over these waters for centuries. Look at all of them out there. Yes. You see, they tie up their boats, as he is doing, and transact their business just as you Americans use automobiles. Uh-huh. Uh, what sort of an individual is that one he's talking to? Uh, the one with the yellow flowing robe. Oh, that is a monk. There are many of those here in Bangkok. See them down there in the street? Oh, yes. They are from the shrines. Look at all those vertical banners hanging in the streets. Those are the business houses of the Chinese merchants. Chinese merchants? Most of the merchants are Chinese. Their shops just seem to fill the streets. The streets are so narrow. This is the old quarters of Bangkok. We also have a modern section. Gavita Pui Wong was as proud of the new sections as the old. <laughs> This is one of our modern boulevards. You see, we have automobiles and cinemas, just as you have in America. And that park over there was modeled after one of your city parks in America. And Gavita Hui Wong was proud of Bangkok's industries. This is our big match factory. It is the biggest of its kind out here. And we also have an armament factory and several others. The Bangkok that Gavita Hui Wong remembers impressed all who saw Forgive it. Forgive me for not writing sooner, but I have been so captivated by the charm of this unbelievable city that I must confess I have neglected everything else. It takes hold of you. The streets teem with fascinating people. I have watched them in the marketplaces and on the rivers and canals and against the dramatic settings of the Siamese architecture. And there is a spirit about the city that is wonderful. Bangkok doesn't look in the least like Paris, but it makes you think of it. The people who come to Bangkok don't like to leave, and everyone in the back country hopes and wishes to come here. The climate is so sultry that I seem to have little of my usual energy, and yet I keep going avid to see all that there is to be seen. Today, I went out to the Dam Mong Airport north of the city, and only here did I find a disquieting note. I got the feeling that Dam Mong Airport in some way foreshadowed the end of all I have seen and the starting of a new unsafe epoch. A new epoch was in the wind. Japanese were filtering in. In the middle 30s, there was only a handful of Japanese in Bangkok. By 1938, there were many hundreds, maybe several thousand. And one of these was the Japanese who made the significant observation 
that Thailand was the doorway to all the adjoining countries. And by 1938, the Wang People's Sangram was premier and was listening with both ears to Tokyo. <laughs> Kavit Abhoi Wong remembers all that. And he remembers how he, with thousands of others, cheered Peebles Sangram. Peebles Sawat! Peebles Sawat! Peebles Sawat means the same as Hail Peebles, which Peebles Sangram ordered said the same as Hitler ordered Heil Hitler said in Europe. Peebles Sawat! Peebles Sawat! People had come up from the military ranks. Major, Colonel, Minister of Defense, then Field Marshal, and now Premier. There is an army, Govat Abhoi Wong, of which we can be proud. Yes. 60,000 well-trained and well-equipped troops. The finest army Thailand has ever had. Yes, sir. And look. Look at those airplanes. Yes, sir. Those planes are as modern as any in the world. I've seen them out at Dommong Airfield. The training school we have at Dommong Airfield will be the heart of the new Siamese Air Force. Yes, sir. That is the salute of our warships in the river. We now have gunboats, destroyers, torpedo boats, and more than 5,000 men in our Navy. Impressive, is it not? Yes, but Luang Pibul Sangram, what value is a force so small as ours? No matter how well-trained and well-equipped, how could it stand against the Japanese? It is not our purpose to have it stand against the Japanese. Or against any great power. The mere knowledge among the big powers that we have a modern army and navy and air force is worth all its cost to us. By this time, Luang Pibul Sangram was a dictator. The year after he became premier, the name of Siam was changed to Thailand. And soon he made his purposes clear. We must bring under Siamese domination not only the territories which Siam in years past was compelled to yield up to France, but also those regions which are not subject to the control of Britain and China. A wave of concern swept over the countries bordering Thailand. Stand to reflect that we have no defenses along the frontier between Indochina and Thailand. It might be well to concentrate at once on installing military defenses along the border. Meantime, Thailand and Japan were drawing closer together. The voice of the Thailanders against the policies of Luang Pibul Sangram was suppressed. They can suppress us, but they can never stamp us out. The free Thais went underground. It is the duty of every Thai to resist collaboration with the Japanese. But pro-Japanese Pibul Sangram was now in the saddle. All Thailanders were considered either for him or against him. Under him, Thailand concluded a treaty with Japan. A Japan and the Thailand mutually agree to respect the territory of the other. What chance would Thailand have to dispute any territory with Japan? Uh, Japan and uh, Thailand agreed to exchange information on the matters of mutual interest. That means that the Japanese will use Thailanders as a source of information in this part of the world. Uh, Japan and uh, Thailand agree not to side with the aggressors if either Japan or Thailand is attacked. That means that if Japan goes to war with the United States, we cannot side with the United States. But meantime... Japan will use Thailand virtually as a base against the United States. But if the Japanese thought they were using Peebles Sangram, Peebles Sangram had his own reasons for entering into this treaty. He watched what was going on across the border in Indochina. The Japanese moved in. Peebles Sangram waited for the right moment, then made his claims. Thailand demands the return of the territories which were stolen from it by Indochina. Peebles Sangram! Peebles the dispute between Thailand and Indochina flared, and the Japanese, already occupying part of Indochina, and with their eyes on Thailand, graciously stepped in as mediators. They gave the territories demanded by Peebles Sangram to Thailand. Peebles Sangram was gratified, but he was to learn that the Japanese were looking farther ahead than he. <laughs> A squadron of Japanese bombers is approaching Bangkok. A squadron of Japanese bombers is approaching Bangkok. Run! Run for your lives! Japanese bombers! 
Attention. Attention. Japanese amphibious forces are landing in Thailand at the neck of the Malay Peninsula. Japanese forces are invading Thailand. <laughs> After five and one half hours, Peebles Sandrum gave up. The Japanese marched in and took over Thailand. Gavit Abhui Wang, who now paces the floor nervously, was there with Peebles Sandrum when the Japanese took over. But if he thought what many another Thailander thought, he said nothing. The Japanese did not deceive the free ties of the underground. The Japanese are aggressors. They cannot say that they came into Thailand to liberate us from the oppression of foreigners, for we have long been an independent nation. The free ties, from their concealment, watched what the Japanese did. In addition to the territory which we returned to you from Indochina, Japan now returned to you the provinces of Mongban and Kandong from Burma. Thailand expresses its boundless gratitude. We are happy to announce that a grand mission for felicitation on the Japan-Thai alliance will soon visit you here in Thailand. Thailand expresses its boundless gratitude. Mm. In appreciation of all the state ministers of Thailand have done in the promotion of Japan-Thai relations, we are happy to present each of them these are gifts. Our gratitude is boundless. And to you, Madame Pibu Sangram, we are happy to present this trove of diamonds and pearls. A tiger never sheds his stripes. A Japanese bearing gifts is still a Japanese. Peebles Sangram became Japan's boy. He declared war on the United States. He had his army, his navy, and his air force. But he also had the Japanese in Bangkok and everywhere else in Thailand. By this time, the Japanese also occupied all of Indochina to the east, Malaya to the south, and Burma to the west. And these countries, they set about diligently to tie together. This railroad system we are building will link directly Thailand with Indochina to the east and Burma to the west. Of course. The new railroad built across Thailand from Indochina into Burma became part of the Japanese strategic highway of steel in East Asia. Over this railroad, they could supply Burma without sending ships all the way down around Singapore and through the Straits of Malacca and up to Rangoon. Also, if Rangoon should be knocked out, they could still pour supplies into Burma overland. This will make Bangkok even more important as a railroad center than ever before. Of course. For years before the Japanese came, Thailand had one of the best railroad systems in Asia. 2,000 miles of rails, and all of the lines converged in Bangkok. But the underground knows the value of this, too. Bangkok is within 48 hours of the three major ports in Southeast Asia by railroad. Rangoon, Burma, Saigon, Indochina, and Singapore. This is a great advantage for the Japanese. But since Bangkok is the railroad center in the middle of the three, this is also a great weakness in terms of allied air power. But when people Sangra mentioned the vulnerability of Bangkok and the Trans-Thailand Railroad, the Japanese had an answer. No railroad is invulnerable unless there is the adequate air power to protect it. And we have aerial supremacy over Thailand. But as the Allied successes in the Pacific piled up, Bibul Sangram and his satellites had reason to reassess their supposed safety. Your new supply railroad runs across the great north and south valleys of our country. For centuries, these great river valleys have been the trade routes between China and the sea. The Chinese armies could drive southward through these valleys and cut the new east and west railroad. This would divide the Japanese forces, and Thailand would become a battleground. You need to have no concern, Wang people, Sangram. Our military has the situation under control. But it is a possibility, is it not? People Sangram, the dictator, became People Sangram, the yes man. At last he knew he was Japan's boy. At last he knew he could do as the Japanese said, and nothing else. 
he saw more and more evidence of the resentment of his people against him. His own personal servant tried to kill him. Assassins attacked him. The underground stalked him. He began to look for a way out. I... I have asked you, the members of my cabinet, to name one to succeed me. You have not seen fit to do this. Today, I ask you again. No, no. You must be the leader. Yes, right. No. No, I cannot go on. I have failed. You must know that Thailand is confronting a precarious situation. You must lead the way. Yes, right. Right. No, no. I have even been reproached that you, my ministers, are men of dishonorable character. Dishonorable. I say that one of you shall succeed me. You, Governor Pui Wong. No, no, I am not worthy to step into your responsibility. You must. You, my ministers, must name Govata Pui Wong my successor. Not only does the enemy hate me, but many of the Thai people as well. No, no, no. You must continue to be our leader. That's right. That's right. That's right. People Songram continued his premier. But in the next two months, he saw the rising tide of the opposition against him. Word filtered in that the Free Thai underground was gathering strength. People Sangram knew he was through. People Sangram has resigned. The word echoed through the underground. People Sangram has resigned. People Sangram has resigned. People Sangram has resigned. resigned. For two weeks, no more was heard of People Sangram. Nothing about what had become of him. Nothing about a successor. Then something strange happened. The ablest leader among the people of Thailand is the Premier Luang People Sangram. The Japanese radio launched a campaign praising him. Premier Luang People Sangram has been a far-seeing statesman with only the welfare of Thailand at a heart. That means that something is about to happen. Through the efforts of Premier Luang People Sangram, the people of Thailand have won their rightful place as the most progressive in the Southeast Asia. It went on like that for weeks. People Sangram had resigned, yet the Japanese radio spoke of him as still premier. That means the Japanese will not permit him to resign. One day he returned to Bangkok, and resumed his office as premier as if nothing had happened. The time has come for all of us to work together for the good of Thailand. But now there were no mass cheering, no people sawats. For now the fury of war had come to Thailand. The wang people sangram. The wang people sangram. The wang people sangram. What is it? The big bombers are coming back eh? again. British bombers and American bombers this time. You must come to the shelter. No, no, I will stay here. You must come. They will be here in a minute. Come along, please. Are they never going to stop coming back? That's right. This way. No hurry. Heavy U.S. and RAF bombers hit Bangkok in force last night. Targets for the concentrated blow were the railroad yards, the Dum Mong airfield north of the city, and the armament factory. U.S. liberators returned to the attack at Bangkok today and blasted railroad yards and the armament factory. India-based American bombers have just returned from giving Bangkok its worst raid, blasting railroad shops and freight yards and smashing the waterfront. Bangkok is being destroyed because people Sangram dragged us into this war on the side of Japan. Yes, down with people Sangram. Down with people Sangram. The bombers came back again and again, hitting Bangkok, the strategic center with ever heavier bomb weights. We cannot remain in Bangkok. That is right. Bangkok is being demolished. We must move the capital to Pechabun. Yes, we must take action in the National Assembly at once. The bombers returned to knock out the harbor and wharfs at Bangkok. For since they had been knocked out Rangoon as a port, the Japanese, unable to land supplies there, were bringing them into Bangkok to be shipped by rail overland into Burma. And the falling bombs hastened the flight of People Sangram and his satellites to Pechabun. Premier Luang People Sangram and his cabinet have resigned after a dispute in the National Assembly. This is Radio Tokyo returning... You People Sangram did not resign. He was ousted. We must make sure that the wrong man does not succeed him. <laughs> The dictator had fallen. Throughout the ruins of Bangkok and in the secluded hideouts in Pechabun, the enemies of people searched for him and his satellites. Some of people's satellites were shot to death. Some were poisoned. People sombering again miraculously escaped. But so did the would-be assassins. 
Luang go with a boy wang. You will succeed the Luang people Sangrom as a premier. Uh, thank you very much. I'm deeply honored, but I must decline. You have been very close to the former premier and the two off. I, I have tried to act in the best interests of my country. Oh, yes, yes, of course. And you were the former premier's choice as his successor. I, uh, he, Luang people Sangrom, was... Uh, very kindly disposed to her. Oh, then it is a settled. You will, of course, accept the premiership and will name a new cabinet at once. I Luan. hardly believe Thank that. Thank you I... very much, Premier Luang. Go with Abu Good day to you, sir. So, today, Luang Govit Abu Wang is a nervous man. He gets his reports about the bombings in Bangkok and the advance of the British in Burma toward the Thailand border. The British have Rangoon now. And for all practical purposes, they've knocked out Bangkok. Uh, Luang Gobert Abui Wang, how long do you think it will be before the enemy is here? The enemy is the Americans, and the British, and the French, and the Chinese. Hmm? What was that? I say, uh, how long do you think it will be before our enemies are here? We have no enemies. So... We have nothing to fear. But enemies or not, the Wang Gavit of Huiyang knows that with the Japanese in control of his country, it bids fair to become a battleground. His advisors have told him... This western shore of Thailand right here, facing the Adaman Sea, is excellent terrain for landing operations. The beaches along here on the western side would permit easy amphibious landings. And the terrain is neither mountainous, as you know, or covered with jungles. The invaders could then cross the narrow peninsula and push northward on Bangkok and up into our broad plains here uh, above Bangkok. Yes. In addition, the enemy could advance from the north down through the river valleys. And... Yes, yes, uh, th that'll be all. Of course. Running through Gavit of Hui Wang's mind is something he has known for a long time. Thailand is the key to military operations in Southeast Asia. When the United Nations get control of Bangkok and the country immediately around it, they will develop it for all its strategic value. From there, the whole range of Japanese bases will be pulverized by bombings. Singapore, Saigon, Palembang, and even many of the bases in Sumatra and Java. The little man knows the meaning of all this, and that is why he is nervous. Listening to The Pacific Story, presented by the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent stations, as a public service to clarify events in the Pacific and to make understandable the cross currents of life in the Pacific Basin. For a reprint of this Pacific Story program, send 10 cents in stamps or coin to University of California Press, Berkeley, California. May I repeat? For a reprint of this Pacific Story program, Send 10 cents in stamps or coin to University of California Press, Berkeley, California. The Pacific Story is written and directed by Arnold Marquis. The original musical score was composed and conducted by Thomas Peluso. Your narrator, Gain Whitman. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.